Welcome everybody to the second episode of Post-Orthodoxy Discussions. I'm Carrie. And I'm Mike. And uh, this is episode number two. We made our first episode about a week and a half ago, mm-hmm. and I got on TikTok. Yeah, you did. Yeah, it's been fun. So if you're, if we make this into a TikTok, TikTok clip, or you uh, are a new TikTok friend of mine, welcome. It's been an adventure. And what else has gone on this week? Um, not much. I kind of had a normal week. Yeah. Felt the same as last week. Yeah. Me too. A um, couple of things did happen this week. Tuesday. Today is Thursday, June 23rd, Tuesday 2022. Was, yeah. Tuesday was a big day. Yeah. Well, I just came home from work and got jumped on Mormon, is, uh, Mormon Stories podcast. It was live. and Because uh, you work the swing shift so you get home. Yeah. Yeah. I work uh, really crappy hours right now from like 3 a.m. until 11 a.m. and or 10 almost. So I was coming home from work early in the morning, and it's a Mormon Stories podcast episode 1613. Um, I don't have the title. I'll grab it real quick. But the the two people that be interviewed, it says. Um, Anyways, the two. Per- people- it's called "Persecuted by the Mormon Church: A Modern Case of Lying for the Lord." Douglas and Brennan. So this young man named Brennan. Yeah, we just we live in Boise, well, Nampa, Idaho, mm-hmm. which is just the town over from Meridian, Idaho, where this took place, and, and we we were listening to it and actually figured out we knew someone that was in that was in this episode. So. Yeah, and I was on the live chat. I chat under our, this this YouTube channel, so uh, post orthodoxy discussion podcast but it was quite interesting um how this young man um who he's married him and his husband are out of the blue they're living in uh, they moved out of his war the stake he grew up in and it's been four years since he's been there and they the and bishop, they were inactive for four years right is that what it was too i think that part's important that they hadn't even been active members of the church yeah, for four years. Yeah, at all. And uh, he gets a knock on the door on Sunday afternoon and two priesthood holders hand him a letter, said, here you go, and he's called to a disciplinary council. And Gerardo, I don't know his last name. Do you know Gerardo's last name? Uh-uh, he's just Gerardo. Yeah, wonderful. He should be training bishops is what I said it during the podcast. Right. He, he had some be. good stuff to say. He can quote the church handbook of instruction. He studied it well. Mm-hmm. But um, so this young man went to this disciplinary. He he recorded himself talking to his bishop. He recorded on the phone. He went to and recorded the disciplinary council that he had with his bishopric, and his husband was there with him. Then he, it ended up. We are familiar with who his stake president is, Mm -hmm. and because he used to be in our stake. Yeah. So and we figured that out just by his voice, but they did let his name slip later on. So we were like, oh yeah, we were right. That's who it was. And then we live in the stake, which also has been on Mormon stories mm-hmm. before recently. Yep. And so it was just, um, it was interesting to watch that. And to right. It was to, heartbreaking. It was. It, to listen to that and just know that that still goes on. So they the basically, church. he's been being in the process of being excommunicated mm-hmm. simply because of his same gender marriage. Yep. Which took a long time for everybody to figure out during the pros- the length of this episode. It is so. seven hours and 14 minutes. It's, and it's kind of, it, it, I usually don't listen to the long episodes, but this one was pretty intriguing. I don't know if it's just because we knew some of the participants, but mm-hmm. um, it was it was good. It was. It was. Good. So I, that's what I recommend. And I found that on Spotify, you can listen to a podcast at three and a half times speed. Oh, I can't stand when he listens to stuff sped up. It's like his... No, my ADD, ADD brain. ADD brain. Yeah. Go ahead. And I don't have ADD. And then last night, I had a softball game, which was way fun. Mm-hmm. It was nice that it started at 9 o'clock. Yeah. I don't like the heat, so I'll go to his softball games that start at 9. Yeah, I once had a teammate, like, it's a mother-daughter <laughs> teammate, the, the daughter asked. It's a co-ed team. You kept she... having games that are started at 6, and that's just the heat of the day it was... Which, and so Carrie doesn't go to my. She'll go to one game once a year when in early spring when the weather's nice. And the the teammate she said to her mom she was, "Does Mike's wife like him? She doesn't come to any games." <laughs> and I said, "Yes, she, she has likes nothing me. to do with Mike. Everything to do with the weather." Yes. So, I think maybe now that you dress him less, 
with less layers, you might. Dressing less. <laughs> <laughs> I might be able to tolerate the heat yes. better. Yeah. So you don't have two t-shirts. <laughs> One tank top compared to two t-shirts. Yeah, it, so. is, it makes a huge difference. <laughs> it does. Might. Maybe that's why I've gone to more games this year. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but we were wa- listening to Mormonism Live, and a friend that I've made from a Facebook group, Alicia Franklin, was on there talking about her experience with uh, priesthood and, and mental health. And, uh, and it's just like crazy. We know people. Well, we do, yeah. And it was just a good week. It was some really good, um, important stories that were told. Yeah. That really resonated with us because we know people and because they're really important stories. Yeah. So I've been, I've uh, gotten to know Alicia really well in a group that meets regularly. Um, and um, hearing her story, boy, she had some courage. And it really, but what touched me as she was telling the story of, of just, the trauma she experienced within the church all of these men in the chat because that's what guys do we're born mm-hmm. uh, probably mostly men are there anyways we're just just saying way to go you and thanks for sharing i can relate and for me my one of my favorite things outside of orthodoxy is choosing i don't and i hope this sounds i hope i say this but is choosing to listen to women more I really have enjoyed that. Yeah. And and listen really with the intent of listening. So I think people can say I'm listening and they're not really listening, like actively listening. Yeah, and that's a skill I'm so, learning in my mm-hmm. master's program is active listening. And, mm-hmm. and so it just, um, boy, I've learned so much from Julie Hanks and Brené Brown and um, just listening Thanks, to... Thanks, ladies. Thank you, ladies. Um, to d- the group I'm with is probably two thirds or more f- is female. I don't know. I'm not in your group. You've been. You you've seen them. So, anyways, that's one thing I've enjoyed. So, anyways, that's I guess a little um, recap. What's new mm-hmm. in the world today? But we um, our episode today. I don't know if I we're working on a title, and obviously it'll be there, but. I asked to some people on social media what they want to hear from us, and um, somebody asked that say. They, so we're going to go over a few of the things people said. Yes, and I want to get mm-hmm. your initial thoughts, Carrie. Okay. So they want to help find. First of all, they want to know why we um, use the phrase post orthodoxy. Okay, in lieu of like ex Mormon. Yeah. That wasn't that the actual question. Yeah, and so I guess I want to start by asking. I guess I'll start ask you, Carrie. Mm-hmm. Um, You've removed your names from the record of the church. Mm -hmm. Would you consider yourself an ex-Mormon? There's a jet. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go a little bit into this. Hang on. There's a jet flying. There's a jet flying. But I think you can probably still hear us because we have microphones. Yeah. So. um, So let me repeat the question because I might make this into a TikTok clip. Sorry. Uh, Do you consider yourself ex-Mormon? No. Let me tell you why. Because in the Mormon church, okay, it's mostly people in the Mormon church that are going to call you ex-Mormon. So in the Mormon church, the phrase ex-Mormon, okay, there's like ex-Mormon literature, ex-Mormon people. Whenever you say someone's an ex-Mormon, there's a very negative connotation. And I think that connotation is that they are against the church actively working to destroy the church um and that they are because the church is it's very black and white Mm -hmm. either you're in or you're out Mm -hmm. and um i still there's a lot in the church that i still think is great Mm -hmm. a lot of people i still love that are in the church and Mm -hmm. and i um i am no longer i'm a former member of the church Mm -hmm. i grew up mormon and I was a practicing Mormon and now I'm not. Um, I chose not to mostly because the church, um, my values no longer aligned with the church. And so I remove my names, but I don't like the word, the phrase ex-Mormon because I think it has, it's deeper than just saying you're not Mormon anymore. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is that too long? No, and while you were were saying that, I thought of what are are other times we use the phrase ex-something? Like an ex-cop? That's Maybe. not quite. Ex CIA. Ex con. 
ex-con. Yeah. So it really is, you know, it's like, it really is about being, you know, against it. Right. And I, of course, I use the hashtag ex-Mormon mm-hmm. out of convenience, but I also try to use post-Mormon also now. Right. And I'm learning. I'm a brand new, you know, TikToker. But mm-hmm. I think also, I think there's something too about the whole... You're kind of you're kind of going out of frame. Okay, I think there's something I th- about I President think you moved Nelson. The camera. I can even move it back. That's it. Better. I think there's something about how Pre- President Nelson wants the members to, you know, the church to not be called Mormons. Mm-hmm. So I think that I think as the if so that's ex, the way the tr- ex Church of Jesus Christ Latter Day Saints. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I saw a really fun. I think Black Exmo um, made a great funny TikTok about it, but it's like. If you're going to say we can't call you Mormons while you're in the church, then we need to come up with another phrase to be outside the church. <laughs> we need to come up with a different phrase for ex-Mormons. Yeah. And so... Because so, that's for, not... That's kind of an illegal term now. Yeah. If it, right. if we're going to play... If we're going to... If we're going to say you can't call us that when we're in the church, then you can't call us that when you're out of the church. And okay. so... That's fair. I think that really that's pushes fair. us back to that post-Orthodoxy. Right. So, post, so so we I defined that I was an ex-Mormon pretty yeah. much. So for the rest of this question, so that's why we don't use ex-Mormon and why, why we use post-Orthodoxy. So post-Orthodoxy is a more inclusive term. Yeah. Coast, okay. We're trying to get away from the black and the white that we have all lived in and where we have all felt like we didn't fit in and where... There is a one way of thinking in the church, um, and if you venture out of that, um, think of when, if any of you have ever said anything a little bit on the fringes in, in Sunday school, something you're venturing into that gray space. Um, all of that space, I believe, is post-Orthodoxy. It's a huge space, and so this is a, this is a group that can have a lot of people in it. Okay, you can still be a practicing member of the church. You can be someone who hasn't gone for 20 years. You can be someone who's just out. You can be someone who has a spouse that's still in. And so... I'm in, so she has the spouse. Post-Orthodoxy. Yeah. Yeah, did we, ta- did we ta- talk about that the Grace Space group we had last in our last episode? I think so. Yeah, so we have... There was... Um, us and two other couples that we has, um, that we started this instagram messaging well with. and we'd had dinner with them and had been talking about this idea of gray space yeah and we were all at that time we were all practicing it was during covid so none of yeah, us were really practicing yeah. right but we were talking about how frustrating it was that there was no gray space yeah and so we started a instagram chat or something yeah so the six of us were chatting and i named it gray mormons Is yeah it, you know because you can name the chat group and so just just this desire that we want to be inclusive and and we're not you know I as somebody asked me I I put a TikTok and I said what question do you have for a former seminary teacher and one of the questions what you know somebody was sort of they were so why are, are you a, why are you trying to convince other people to leave the church mm-hmm. and why another person why can't you leave the church alone and right. I we like none of those no, things. If you find yourself in this gray space, mm-hmm. this post-orthodoxy space, or you find someone that you know and love in that space, we want to engage with you. We want to create that space and that mm-hmm. community to talk. Right. Um, we- and and tr- also to make it less scary, because I think when you make something, not having gray space makes anything outside of the orthodox space really frightening. And I, I, I think that's why people have such a hard time when they have dissonance, okay? When they start thinking, we talked about this word last time, where that means you just start, or differentiation, dissonance, whatever. When you you when, want to talk about you, differentiation. Yeah, right? differentiation. But when you start, start thinking differently than the group, it can become, it's frightening. Yeah. And I that's because it's black and white. And there isn't, there isn't any room to have a safe way to think or a safe way to talk about it or talk things through. And uh, yeah, so gray space. It's a safe space. Yeah, so I'll keep using the hashtag ex-Mormon out of convenience because we want to 
get that con- that that group of people mm-hmm. to sort of you know well and that's kind of the hashtag that yeah. that people use even if they're not and people have yeah. different people have different like definitions of it too that's just my definition yeah so that's uh, we wanted to talk about that about why mm-hmm. we why we use the the term um, post orthodoxy instead of uh, ex mormon yeah. and orthodox means just you know to adhere to the the standards or the beliefs of the system and if you found yourself outside of that i have had so many beautiful conversations this week i was on the phone with someone with this week that considered themselves non-binary and just talking about the challenges that the, they are facing as a member of the church and not having anybody to talk to and mm-hmm. i made this connection with them because of this podcast that's and great. so that's what this that's what this is about it's about creating and 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 so it's just been it's been really enjoyable so the next thing carrie one of our someone wanted to ask about they wanted help finding spirituality and purpose after mormonism okay and so whether you're talking to that person or you're talking to mm-hmm. someone who's you know has a friend or a spouse that have is out maybe they're orthodox and their spouse mm-hmm. is, is so what would you like to say about have you found purpose? Would you, do you well, th- I, I do. I'll ask two questions. Okay. And do you consider yourself spiritual? Okay. So I'll kind of answer, I think both of those will kind of be answered together. Okay. So I'm kind of going to tell a little bit of my story here because mm-hmm. um, I have been in the process of being post orthodoxy for quite a while. Probably for a decade I was in gray space mm-hmm. and now I've, I've, is, um, now I have taken the step to remove my name from the church, and it is a very lonely space. And that was last August, so less than a year yeah. ago. We're coming up to almost So it, it is a very lonely space. Uh, luckily, so I'm going to tell this story. Luckily, I have some siblings who have left, so I have people I could talk to. I have some friends who have left, so I had some connections. So that's somewhere you can find connection, and it's finding people who are in a similar space. But I was talking to my sister, who had left 20 years ago. Um, we're 18 months apart. We have kids the same age so we've always done everything together even our kids together right everything together except our religion Mm -hmm. right and so when I told her about this when I came out to her about this we had a lot to talk about so we started going out to brunch on Sundays (laughs) (laughs) which at first I felt so rebellious which is hilarious now to think about that but I felt I felt terribly rebellious and then so it's during COVID so instead of going to you know I'm and I'm at the time, if I don't mind, real he quick. would do his Zoom. I'm I'm making sure it says you know Mike Fuller or the Fullers yeah. on the Zoom, so I'm getting you know <laughs> yeah. I'm still Your teaching points. and showing up, and showing up to church. <laughs> Whatever. And so we'd go out to these brunches, and um, it was just a nice time for me to connect and to talk about all the things. And my sister was talking this one time, and she has not believed for 20 years. Has she's been completely? She didn't remove her name from the church, but for all intents and purposes, she was not Mormon. Right, but she said, we were talking this one time, she said, the weird thing is, she said, I don't believe in the Holy Ghost or anything like that at all. She said, but I felt the Spirit. I felt the Spirit when I had to make decisions for my kids. Felt the Spirit when I had to make decisions, big decisions in my life. She goes, I don't know what that was. And I just looked at her, and her name's Heidi, and I said, it was Holy Heidi. And at the time, it was really funny. We just laughed because it just sounds funny, Holy Heidi. But we um, got to talking about that and how all of that decision-making and all of the the things she was feeling, um, they didn't need to have a name because it was her, right? And so talking about, so what exactly was the question like where? Do you feel you have purpose or spirituality purpose. after Mormonism? Okay, so purpose, finding purpose that helped me feel more purposeful because I it, it went from me feeling like I had lost something to me feeling like I had gained something. Oh, okay. Right? And I had gained insight and power and understanding and um, I just felt so good because I, I too had felt like I had lost direction, kind of like you'd lose your oars and you can't steer the canoe or whatever. And so I finally had them and they were better and they worked better. And so that really helped me. And then to your question about spirituality, I think this really... Can I pause real quick? Yeah. 
I have heard you tell the story. You start. She started a podcast about this with so her sister. So it's called Holy Sisters, yeah. But this is the first time I've heard heard seen you articulate it that way mm-hmm. of gaining. Yeah, it's the first time I think I've said that too because it's it sounded really good to me too. So yeah, we'll we're have having to, a moment. We're having like, a moment wow. here. It's kind of like that moment when we were having brunch. It's like, whoa, it's powerful. So, but, so, so this so whole gained, concept so you, of the so you holy gained, self. You you gained. What did you gain? So I, I felt like I had lost something. And then by realizing this, I felt like I had gained something. And so I think I said I had felt like I, I gained power and direction, understanding of myself. And no longer, I didn't feel anymore like I was just wandering out there without this direction. Because you lose that when you leave the church. Or even when you become post-Orthodox, you lose those things that you believed in. And the church is so much about giving you direction and pathways and and a checklist of things you should do. And so um, when I realized that that goodness and decision-making was me, um, it was wonderful. And I liked it so much more. <laughs> it was just, it, and, it, and it really... It does put a lot of pressure on me to be a good person. That That's one of my values, too, is just being a kind person and being good. I have this quote on my office wall, and it's by the Dalai Lama, and it says, my religion is very simple. My religion is kindness. Mm-hmm. And, and it has really helped me go into the spirituality thing to whittle my spirituality down. I had to take out all the scriptures, all of the prophets' words, all of the doctrine, everything, and whittle it down to to a value that was extremely important to me, and kind of encompasses all the other, all of my other values, which is kindness. Um, so I, that's I've just made it more simple. My spirituality is simple, and that's a word I think I always use to describe it. You've you, Carrie's kind. Mm-hmm. You've always been kind. And now you're right. able to just be carry and I've yeah and that and that's that's kind of the purpose of my podcast like holy holy sisters uh-huh. but it's really we talk I talk a lot about the, being the holy self yeah and, and, and gaining and gaining that authority mm-hmm. you know Alicia last night in right. that podcast was saying she would go to priest and leaders for help for men couldn't find an answer her husband was very supportive but he was a man right the holy ghost is male mm-hmm. right you have all these men to give you advice but then right. you can just be you to listen to that yeah. female voice and so i think both of us are having this this op- this we're enjoying just just listening to ourselves and for me again listening to women and i was thinking while you were saying all of that, that our, I'm I'm married to Holy Carrie now, and it's been mm-hmm. just a, we, our marriage just because she has made this decision and found this, has just grown. And again, I even I've said this I think last time. Even that year that I was working and the next six months for me to figure it out. So for a year and a half, definitely, we were in a mixed faith marriage. Right. I don't think that there was ever, once I finally, and I, I'm again, I want to talk about this too. I haven't really arrived anywhere in my belief system or anything. But once I finally was able to verbalize, you know, I don't, don't, don't like this system. Mm-hmm. Once I verbalized that. There really wasn't necessarily a change in our relationship in that you, your kindness Mm -hmm. was evident. Right. You were kind to me as a spouse and you said, hey, I've made this decision, Mike, Mm -hmm. but, and my decision includes me being kind and you, she was just patient with me, you know. You were, you were patient with me too. (laughs) I mean, we, by no means were we perfect. No. We don't want to come across that way. This, this had a lot of pain in it too. Okay. And, 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 fr- learning, and learning tears and frustration and, frustration and, and, and swear yeah. words. Yeah, lots, lots swear of swear words. words. <laughs> Which can, oh, they help. Oh, yes, <laughs> they, they do. So, but it makes, it reminds me of that um, quote you were quoted on. The um, uh, life without life. manufactured shame is just bliss. Because uh-huh. I've watched you, because you, you talked about me becoming Holy Carrie, I've watched you become Holy Mike. 
you got rid of all that manufactured shame. Yeah. And that's made you a different person too. Yeah. And I I love that. I've, I've, <laughs> I've, I've loved you not feeling bad for things you didn't even feel bad about. Oh, um, it's... You know, you should feel bad about things that you do that are wrong. Mm -hmm. but that are unkind. Yeah, that are unkind. But mm -hmm. you shouldn't feel bad because you didn't check five box all right. the boxes that day. Or that you're not measuring up or being perfect or yeah. whatever. Mormonism is, is, is a tough system. It is tough. It is. There were some, you know, we... It, there's some positives. We'll, we'll make an episode of that. But yeah. But so go back to the question here, mm -hmm. you finding spirituality and purpose mm -hmm. after Mormonism. So what's, you've shared that story. Can you mm -hmm. give me a TikTok snippet of what's your advice to somebody that's trying to, f maybe recap, but trying how do you to find purpose? Yeah, you might, re you might be repeated, but. Well, I think they, I think they need to become in tune with their, their sense of self, which might be finding values. There's lots of uh, value exercises you can do to find, and that's really helped me to understand what my values are. Yeah. And so my purpose is doing things that support those values. Mm -hmm. And um, it, and it, and it, the good thing is, is it always rings true to me. So it's not somebody else's checklist that I'm working off of. It's my checklist. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, yeah, it's a better. It's a better system. Uh huh. And that's what I how I would verbalize it. So finding purpose. If I were to answer this question, how to find purpose after after orthodoxy, mm -hmm. I realize that I've transitioned from a belief and or a belief based system, and it might be a better word for it. We might come up with it during this conversation mm -hmm. to a values based system. And by a belief based system, it wasn't really that. It was more an authority-based system mm -hmm. to a value system where any decision of behavior that I had to decide for mm -hmm. myself or if a student was asking me, hey, Brother Fuller, I've been asked throughout my career, is it okay to go to my relative's wedding when it's a same-gender marriage? Mm -hmm. um, is it okay for me to have a job on Sunday? You know, is it? It's these okay questions. I love what one of my therapists said. You know, there are no shoulds, right? It's basically should you do this or should you do that is what the, those questions boil down to. And for us, it's you know, you know, should is it? Should we watch The Office? Was the question you know, mm. I came up with. All right. Um, what should we do? So we went from a should. I, I think it's a, a should based system to a values based system. Yeah, pretty much. And we talked about how the church does have very good values, but. I think the problem people run into is that they're, um, they're the church's values and not just the church's values. They kind of give you a checklist of how to implement those values. Uh -huh. Um, even like the young women's values, they're very clear to find there's lessons on them. I don't even know if they have those anymore. Yeah, they do have them. Do still. they have them anymore? And um, but we were talking about that and how, how it's just, it's it's those aren't your values if you're being you can have those they can be your values but it might not be how you define them and how you want to implement them uh -huh. yeah and part when we you and i were talking about this question before the episode i thought of the for the strength of youth pamphlet mm -hmm. right so it'd be fun exercise and we might do it but to go through the strength of youth pamphlet and say so what would this look like in a values-based system because it's like how should you dress and groom yourself, mm -hmm. right? Instead of what are, here's the shoulds and shouldn'ts, mm -hmm. you know, what how would you what value would you base that on? Didn't you come up with one simple value? You swore when you said it. Did I? Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember. Okay. I should have written it but, down. But you know, me, you know the strength of music. What music is okay to listen to or not to? Um, friends who should you be friends with and all these questions they're so disconvoluted and it's almost like in this shoulds based system I know what I, I, okay. know what I said now in this shoulds based system yeah. it's a, you have to filter what have all the prophets said on this and that was part of that 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 um, wonderful those that young man Brandon um, from that Mormon stories he was him and his husband they were oh so, they were they were so eloquent oh that and kid the way is, that, that is yeah. And he wrote he wrote a statement because the letter said, you know, come to this disciplinary council meeting. Well, membership council mm -hmm. now. And 
bring a written statement and he just wrote down and he said one prophet said this but another prophet said that about gay marriage what should we do Who should we? one said this one said that and it was just so confusing for him so instead of trying to filter things on what should we do based on what prophets have said what should we do what's what's your system i just think um use your own fucking values that's what i said i think I was, he said something else no. like that's what I said. Okay. I, I, I just, I, I think you need figure, fi- and you know what they are, and they can change, and there's no right or wrong. There's no should. Yeah. There's no a list and, and color-coded list and yeah. things that you need to do. Just they're, they're your own. They're your own. So you dropped your first F-bomb. You mm-hmm. only lasted It's uh, not my first F-bomb. Our, in our episodes, <laughs> I'd like to talk about that for a second. Okay. okay real quick. Okay. First of all, if you're listening to this and that didn't feel right to you, I, I want to, to um, speak to you because we want you to continue listening. Mm-hmm. One of my values is expression. And there is a difference, for example, for me in saying leaving the church is lonely and leaving the church is fucking lonely. And um, if you, if that doesn't feel right to you, right, um, if you uh, swear words are just words that we f- that people f- find offensive, and if you're a believer still want to be you know somewhat believing, Elder Bednar said that we should choose not to take offense. So <laughs> I'm jokingly telling. So what are you trying to say? You need to sum this up. I'm trying, I don't know to, what say, I'm trying to say. I'm just trying to say that um, if swearing uh, uh, doesn't feel, if hearing swear words doesn't feel good to you yet, I hope that you'll get over it. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say. This is, and this isn't going to be, I don't think this is going to be full of uh, vul- No, if you listen carefully, you know, whatever. listening carefully. But, um, but I, I taught my... Sometimes I to, it's, a good, it's a good adjective. I would teach my seminary students, right? There's levels of swearing. There's toe stubbings, you know, and the, that's, mm-hmm. you know... Part, Depends on how bad you stub your toe. Yeah. And there's calling people names, and we should, we don't do that, and we avoid that. But then there's also just, um, you know, every other t- word. Mm-hmm. And then there's a the fourth, you know, there's like, this is the best way for me to express ourselves. Right. So I just wanted to throw that in there. So where were we? I got off track. We probably can go to the next question. I think it's bot. Well, yeah. Um, let's go to the next question then. So somebody else wanted to know about not just finding spirituality and purpose after Mormonism, but they, they, they want help finding happiness. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on that, mm-hmm. Carrie? What's Holy Carrie think? Happiness. So I think, I think happiness has very little to do with religion. I think I think happiness is is, um, and I also don't think. I also do not like toxic positivity. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about that for a minute. Okay. So um, that was a sort of a comment that someone made about the state president that we were yeah listening to on that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know if any of you have ever felt this way in the church before, but you will hear talks and lessons talking about people who have gone through hardships and gone through hard times, but, but they were always happy because they had the Spirit with them or because they were following the church and because of this and that. And that is, creates a culture of toxic positivity. Mm-hmm. That you're just always supposed to be happy and everything's always supposed to feel good. Sometimes, a lot of times, things don't feel good. And it can be years of feeling like crap. And that's okay. Life is hard. And um, so finding happiness, um, I have. I think I found more happiness once I realized it didn't have anything to do with me being spiritual enough Mm -hmm. that sometimes things in life are really hard um there's been a few times this week where i have i have cried about a few things but it was just because i'm going through a tough time and it was nice just to have that tough time and not be like oh i should probably be doing my my what's it called now not visiting teaching Uh, not ministering ministering yeah you might have missed that because Mike pulled the bike. Ministering. Off. Ministering. So, but it doesn't have anything to do with me me checking the box. Do you want to fix that camera? Yeah. A little wonky. There we go. 
Um, it's just because because I had a few hard things this week, and so um, it's it's made it easier for me to go through those things. I don't have the secondary unhappiness mm -hmm. that I'm loading on top of it. It's just it just it's just something I have to go through. So in the past, you would have been in that sad moment mm -hmm. and thought, if I go serve someone, it will right. remove my sorrow. Right. And where instead now you're just saying, hey, I, and our conversations when you were filling that this mm -hmm. week for whatever, it was like, you know, I can see why you're, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's a normal feeling. Right. The things that you're experiencing in your life right now, and that it's understandable that you're, right. so you're, you're sad. Right. And so I think while you were saying that, I, I my mind asked the question, so what is the definition of happiness? And I think it goes back to values. Mm -hmm. I think the more that uh, I'm happy because I'm living my values mm -hmm. and that it doesn't have anything to do with what's going on in life. Right. I can be I can have de be depressed or sad because of mm -hmm. that. But in, in and I think Brene Brown used the term wholeheartedness, mm -hmm. right? Because it's. You know, we have this message. We're getting it from Brad Wilcox. We're getting it from um, Eller Ballard, and I put a TikTok about it. You know that it's you know w when you leave the church, you're fucked. You yeah, know, there's nothing. You, and that you're not gonna, you, you're not going to be happy. You're not going to be happy. And you've, I found the opposite because you've left the plan of happiness. Like, yeah, you, you, you left it. <laughs> and so I had a yes, beautiful so. conversation with a wonderful colleague. Former, I love. I still call them colleagues, mm -hmm. not a former, but a wonderful colleague of mm -hmm. mine, a, semi, a, a seminary teacher. And we're talking, and I said to him, I said, I don't get it. I said, since I've, since I've quit my job. And when I quit my job, I did something else, okay? I, I, I went out to breakfast with our bishop, who's a great guy. And I, and, and I, said, for, I said, I have taken the church. I've held a disciplinary council for the church. And if we need to be specific, for Joseph Smith. And I have found them guilty. And I'm disfellowshipping myself from them for a year. Disfellowshipping them from you. Yeah, however you want okay. to word it. And so, I know that sounds really weird, and it's probably just the bit. seminary teacher. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Anyways, um, during that year, I have experienced more often and more abundantly the things that I told my students mm -hmm. were the spirit that I taught and them I think the spirit. When you were sitting there talking, I think it might be a better adjective to use to say joy. Joy, yeah. I have felt and more often. Yeah, I felt joy. I don't know. That joy. The, you know, there's it's, it's. I haven't found the right words, and I'm a, I'm I'm in no hurry to find the right words, mm -hmm. and I'll find them someday, right? Right. But I ha and. I expressed that to this wonderful colleague, and he and he says, "So, what's the formula? You know, what's if if the, if you're happy now?" And he's very polite. It was no, there was just nothing but friendship and kindness and confusion in this conversation because we're confused. I think that's a great word to describe. It. And he says, and I said, "Well, he goes," and I said, "It's almost a negative." And he goes, what do you mean by that? And I say, it's almost like I've removed in this, what's my formula? A plus, he goes, what's X plus Y equals, you know, mm -hmm. this new, whatever you're describing. And I said, and that's, and again, I repeated to him what that I've already said it before, but I, I've removed the shame. Mm -hmm. And I said, all Christian religions and Mormonism especially are based upon, it's a shame model. Right. It's basically... I've come to realize, and I have that picture, and I'll put it in the show notes that I put on TikTok, that picture of Jesus pulling, you know, it's it's from the point of view of Peter in the water and Jesus reaching down to reach him. I used to love this picture. Mm -hmm. And now um, my perspective has changed to where I think when it comes to Jesus, because I deconstructed down to Jesus, and as a seminary teacher, I still fully believed in Jesus, and I taught Jesus, and I was able to continue to teach with authenticity because I still did. Mm -hmm. And and I want to speak a little bit to that right here too, is that even though I'm no longer a member of the church uh -huh. and I probably identify more with being agnostic, mm 
mm-hmm. because I don't consider myself smart enough to know that there is a God or there isn't a God. And that's I, what I think. Yeah. I don't know if that's a real definition for it. That's kind of how it's like, I can't tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Are any of us smart enough to say that? Yeah. Um, I guess I'll find out when I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. But um, I forgot. I just lost my train of thought what I was going to say. You cut me off when I was saying. What were you saying? Um, my formula. I don't know. I'll come back to it. It'll come back to me. <laughs> what I was saying, though, is I've realized when it comes to Jesus, I... Oh, can I remember now? You got it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but even though that's, you know, going back to, you know, I'm not smart enough to know or not to know, um, I believe in Christ-like values. Mm-hmm. So I don't think you have to believe in Christ to believe in these Christ-like values because if, if you take it all down to Christ... And the things he stood for and the things he did and the things we learned from studying his life, that's mm-hmm. kindness. Yeah. Right? And if it's we be, kindness. I'm going to be more specific and actually say Jesus. Because you told me once, mm-hmm. you said, I believe in being Christ-like. Mm-hmm. And if you have, I had to yeah. have your opinion. Let's real quick. Okay. And I'm going to take it actually. I think if we take Jesus the teacher and mm-hmm. then Jesus the Christ and Christ means savior and Messiah, mm-hmm. right? It's actually, I think we should use Jesus more. We believe in being Jesus like, right? Um, Cause we believe uh, I, I would verbalize similar. What you just said is the teachings of Jesus. I think for most part that I like the <coughs> teachings of Jesus, <coughs> but I've separated the teachings of Jesus and I'm going to get a lot of flack for this. If you know, from the doctrine of Jesus. Mm-hmm. So here on one side we have the teachings. <coughs> of, I'm sorry. That's a teachings of Jesus. He and he says, um, um, give me a teaching of Jesus that we like. Um, um, love one another. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Mm-hmm. Right. Do unto others. You know that. Be a good Samaritan. Right. We have this parables of Jesus. <coughs> you cover your microphone when you do that. We have the parables of Jesus. Right. And the teachings of Jesus of kindness, which can be around that. But then we have the doctrine of Jesus, which is basically, I'm perfect. You are the natural man. You're an enemy to me and God. Mm-hmm. And you can't be an enemy unless you do what I do and right. be just like me. It's almost toxic in that way. And I know it's hard for some people to swallow when they hear me say that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but it's like basically if you bill that down, like the natural man is an enemy to God. And Moses says man is nothing, <coughs> which is something I never before he says that. It's pretty deep to say you're an enemy to somebody. Right. That all of us deep down are evil and God's enemy. Mm-hmm. That's pretty deep. And that's shame based. Mm-hmm. And going back to what I was saying about, sh- you know, happiness like, and shame. Like we are all enemies to God, that kind of thing. Yeah, the natural man is an enemy yeah. of God, and has been and will be forever and ever, unless mm-hmm. he yields to the enticing of the spirit, right? Mm-hmm. And so instead of saying, starting out with this idea that, you know, the, that the natural man is evil and weak, it says this shame based. So my, my co- colleague and friend was asking, so what's it? I said, basically, my ability my formula of happiness is that i've removed that shame and i'm living my life based on values Mm -hmm. and those are so easy to follow there's not a checklist and it brings this just connection with with humanity Mm -hmm. and so i'm able to show for me it's it's given me an avenue to be a better person yeah. To be the better person that I always wanted to be, but I, I was I was kind of doing all this background stuff that kept me too busy, um, kept me indoctrinated, uh, for yeah, just kept me too kept me too busy to be the the value based person I wanted to be. <clears throat> So we, when we were talking about this, I, I said, what are some of your values? And we found, and I'll put a link to this, it was just a simple Google search, Brain A. Brown, a list of values. I just Googled values and found a list that Brain A. Brown came up with, and we went through it together, and, and well, separately, and I found some of my values, I've decided, are authenticity, compassion, integrity, and vulnerability. And Carrie, I don't know, well, 
I can't I don't, read them. You can't read my handwriting. <laughs> uh, compassion, diversity, gratitude, humility, humor, and simplicity, to name a few. Mm-hmm. And it, it, I think it is worthwhile for someone that's asking this question or in this space transitioning from this should space system Mm -hmm. to this values based system to google and to and just find find some there's just there's different uh tools out there in the internet available Mm -hmm. to just go through a process of asking myself what are my new values right and i and I also think when you not new actually what because these are core values right. you compassion is probably my uh, my core value yours you call yours kindness right my right. and compassion. it's something that I wasn't able to do as an orthodox so I think when you find this value list and really honor yourself honor your holy self um, that goes back to finding purpose and spirituality that's where you find it that's is where, yeah. kind of understanding your values um, honoring those values and you seek out people and places and things that honor those values and I've really you know I'm sitting here thinking again I want this to hopefully be forever the listener that's maybe a spouse or a parent or a relative of someone that's post-orthodox they have this fear of okay my spouse has left the church they're gonna go be in. They're gonna go, you know, eat, drink, and be merry. And I had that fear. Do you want to tell a little story? This is a funny story. Maybe we, we've been a little heavy. Maybe we should tell this yeah, funny story. Yeah. So Carrie <laughs> goes. So I had this dear friend of mine who was, found out that I was in the post orthodoxy space. And yeah. We went out to lunch and had this wonderful conversation. So Mike knew we were out at lunch. I don't even want to so, tell the previous story. Let me tell the previous story. Okay. We bumped into her at Costco. Had this half hour long conversation. We're both post orthodox. And but we didn't she, know it at the time. Afterwards, she goes, I was just wondering if you're ever going to look down and notice my alcohol in my Costco cart. And we didn't. We, never did. we didn't. But then <laughs> later on, she just saw me on some Facebook group or something and, and texted me. And we went out to lunch and we're talking about it. And there's this wonderful, uh, wonderful, nice bar downstairs. It's, it's a was, lounge. She, and, and she was like, hey, city here. It's, hey, it's opening up at three o'clock. Do you want to go down and get a She asked me if I'd ever drank. I said, no. Do you want to go down and get a drink? Do I we said, know the sure. date of this? We need to look on your text. See I don't when know. This we'll was. see when it was. But um, I said, sure. I'm, she, I was practice. I was still employed. Yeah. So, yeah, he was still employed. I'm and employed so full-time seminary we teacher. We went down there. I don't remember if I texted you before or after. But but she got. I think I texted you before, and I said I'm going to have a drink with Cheryl. And I gave a positive text. You did. Like, hey, you, you, you go be holy but, carry. How did you really feel? <laughs> what did you think? I You were afraid sat, because I sat home in bed. Exactly I ended up sad. crying because I figured for sure you were gonna get drunk and go home with some other guy. Cause that's that what, I was gonna go cheat on him because I had one drink. That's what Mormonism had convinced yeah. me would happen. Yeah, and it, and it wasn't that way at all. I had this drink and I couldn't drink very much of it because I'm such lightweight. It made me really dizzy, and I couldn't. It even, takes her one drink. It takes me three much as much, three I times as much finish, alcohol. I couldn't even finish it. So, um, yeah, and then we waited two hours till I could drive home. <laughs> And but, that was the, but, the end of that. Yeah. And and so I guess going, but here's a case study, right? Values instead of shoulds. If you, if you are in that space mm-hmm. of a mixed face marriage or a relative that you're worried is one, right. run up one jump, jumped off the deep end or whatever you want to say, I said, I said that a life based on values has brought me more joy than a life based off shoulds. Um, what do you want to say to finish? I like that. You want to have any last thoughts? I really liked how you ended that. A life based off values is, has brought you more joy than a life based off shoulds. Yeah. And so, that's a good place to end it. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Catch you guys on the flippity flip. Bye. <laughs>